On this channel, we spend a great deal of time talking about the members of our genus, Homo. Each species is endlessly fascinating in their own right, but we cannot forget that just like any other animal on Earth, they themselves descend from an inconceivably long line of forebearers. Consequently, I feel that it is important to take a look much further back into the fossil record than we typically go on this channel. First, we should look at the origins of primates. Primates first appeared towards the end of the Cretaceous period between 63 and 74 million years ago. Some studies suggest a younger date, though that is not really important. What is important is what made primates different from their contemporaries. Primates evolved to have relatively large brains, forward-facing eyes, grasping hands, opposable thumbs, and clawless fingers. A variety of other animals have some of these traits, but it was the combination of these traits which made primates successful. Primates would survive the Cretaceous-Paleogene mass extinction event and diversify throughout the Cenozoic. Various lineages would split off. Simians, sometimes referred to as high primates, which include monkeys and apes, diverged around 40 million years ago. The group would then subsequently split into New World monkeys, Old World monkeys, and apes. Apes diverged from Old World monkeys about 25 million years ago. They differed in a number of ways from their monkey relatives. They evolved molar teeth with five distinct cusps in the lower jaw and four in the upper jaw. Their shoulders could be fully rotated unlike monkeys. Their chests became wide and shallow and they lost their external tails. Apes tended to be larger than most monkeys and evolved to fill a variety of different niches. Gibbons were the first family in our clade to split off around 18 million years ago. They sort of went the monkey route with small bodies and long limbs. Our family, Hominidae, typically just referred to as hominids or great apes, evolved larger bodies. Orangutans were the first lineage of great apes to split off in Eurasia around 14 million years ago. They remained mainly arboreal while our lineage seems to have spent more time on the ground. Back in Africa, gorillas split off around 8.8 .8 million years ago. They went the large herbivore route, growing large digestive tracts to process massive amounts of leaves and other food sources which are not very calorically dense. Our line continued to be partially arboreal and relied on fruits, roots, nuts, and seeds. The next major split to occur was between our ancestors and the ancestors of chimpanzees and bonobos. People often imagine that we evolved from chimpanzees, but this is not the case at all. We evolved from a common ancestor between us. Chimpanzees have also evolved significantly since this time. The human chimp last common ancestor lived during the end of the Miocene. Molecular evidence suggests that this split happened anywhere between 4 to 8 million years ago. Other evidence typically suggests 6 to 7 million years ago, while some points to as early as 13 million years. The initial split may have occurred over 10 million years ago, but hybridization from subsequent populations makes giving an exact date nearly impossible. We have fossil evidence that may represent this common ancestor, but it is hard to be sure. 9.9 .9 million year old evidence from Kenya dubbed Nakilopithecus may be ancestral to both us and chimpanzees. Though fossil evidence from Greece and Turkey from 9.6 to 7.4 million years ago dubbed Oranopithecus could also suggest Eurasian origins. Eurasian origins are possible, though Oranopithecus seems to be more closely related to orangutans than to the lineage of chimps or humans. Our last common ancestor likely evolved within Africa. Regardless of where this hominid lived, what is more important is what happened after it split into the ancestors of chimps and bonobos and the ancestors of humans and our bipedal relatives. The ancestors of chimps likely continued to live in the trees and were adapting to quadrupedal locomotion while our ancestors began to adapt to bipedal locomotion. However, it can be very hard to tell if a fossil ape is part of our early line or the early line of chimpanzees. The ancestors of chimpanzees had thinner enamel, large sharp honing canines, and quadrupedal adaptations. When looking for our ancestors, we would look for smaller canines, thicker enamel, and adaptations to bipedalism. Canines are important to keep in mind because they are a mark of aggression. In chimpanzees, 
Canines are much larger in males because they are used for intraspecific combat. Our line of apes have smaller canines that are also similar in size between the sexes. The oldest fossils that may represent our line of ancestry is Sahelanthropus chadensis. Sahelanthropus was found simply sitting on the surface in northern Chad. This initially made it quite hard to date, though it was determined to be between 6.8 to 7.2 million years old. The fossils consisted of a quite complete skull, jaw, teeth, and limb bones. The skull had a relatively small brain and a larger brow, but also smaller canines and a flatter face than chimpanzees. Its foramen magnum, the hole at the bottom of the skull, is more centrally located than in chimpanzees. This may suggest that Sahelanthropus had a more upright posture than chimpanzees. Analysis of the femur has been controversial. A 2020 paper found that the femur was not consistent with bipedalism, while a 2022 paper found quite the opposite. Based on the morphology of the femur, they were able to rule out quadrupedalism. The postcranial evidence was rather consistent with habitual bipedalism and arboreal clambering. Sahelanthropus may very well be one of the first hominins. Bipedal apes from our lineage are considered hominins, while hominids is a wider classification that describes all living and extinct great apes. Though it is tempting to consider Sahelanthropus as the earliest hominin, we must be careful with this designation. It is even possible that it belonged to the chimpanzee lineage and it just evolved convergent traits. Fortunately, we have some other fossils from the late Miocene that can help our understanding. Fossil remains named Auroran tigenensis from 6.1 to 5.7 million years ago may be the earliest species of hominin. It had small teeth relative to its body size and the canines are reduced. The femur is indicative of bipedalism, though the rest of the body seems to be adapted to climbing trees. Some have argued that it may be an intermediate form between earlier Miocene apes and Australopiths, though some have argued that it may represent its own separate branch. Once again, this ape provides fascinating evidence, though it is not conclusive. The next oldest fossil species would be Artipithecus. Two species of Artipithecus have been discovered, Ramidus and Kadaba. Kadaba is the older of the two at an age of 5.6 million years and is only known from fragmentary remains. The toe bone suggests that it may have been bipedal and the teeth suggest that it may be ancestral to Artipithecus Ramidus. We have discovered much more complete remains of Artipithecus ramidus. A skeleton nicknamed Artie preserved the skull, teeth, pelvis, hands, and feet of an individual. Its hands, feet, and pelvis had adaptations to tree climbing as well as bipedalism. Its forna magnum and pelvis are more indicative of bipedalism than any previous species, though it still undoubtedly spent time in the trees. Though it may sound as conclusive as the other remains, what makes this discovery special is its other features. Their canine teeth are much smaller than any ape before and they do not differ much between the sexes. This suggests that their social behavior was much more like other hominins than to chimpanzees. Their overall cranial morphology appears to be neotenic compared to that of older ancestors. This is important because neoteny may be key to understanding the evolution of our genus and species. Neoteny is the delaying or slowing of the development of an organism which leads to the retention of juvenile features in adults. When looking at pictures of infant humans and chimpanzees, they are actually quite similar. It is mainly when they get older that drastic changes occur. Modern humans have a much longer childhood than chimpanzees and retain many juvenile neotenic features. But we are still separated by 7 million years, so this is not the best example. Artipithecus ramidus, on the other hand, clearly retains many juvenile features compared to Sahelanthropus and other Miocene apes. As the hominin line continued to evolve, species appear to get even more neotenic, though it is more complicated than that. Anyways, Artipithecus ramidus is classified as a hominin and it may even be ancestral to Australopithecines. However, it lived only a few hundred thousand years before Australopithecines appeared. Both Artipithecus ramidus and Australopithecines may have descended from Artipithecus cadaba or some even older species. 
This would mean that Australopithecines directly descended from Ardipithecus, which in itself may be a descendant of Sahelanthropus. Though we do not have enough evidence to confidently say this, it very well may be the case. If not, it is at least clear that during the late Miocene and early Pliocene, hominins were adapting to a terrestrial environment and were retaining more neotenic traits than other apes. Australopithecines were really the first hominin to find considerable success. The oldest known Australopithecines appeared over 4 million years ago and would spread around much of Africa, evolving into different lineages. Our genus would eventually evolve from them around 3 million years ago. Researchers are undecided regarding which species we actually evolved from and may not know for years to come. What is important about the appearance of the Australopithecines is that they pioneered the bipedal ape lifestyle. Though some still may have spent time in the trees, they were all primarily bipedal. Australopithecines would survive for millions of years in various forms, and considering that we descend from them, they never really went extinct. The evolution of our earliest ancestors is far from understood, though we have made great strides to ascertain this knowledge. New discoveries will undoubtedly change our ideas in many unforeseen ways. Thanks for, wa thanks for watching this rather short summary of our earliest origins. As some of you know, I am working on a video that is over 3 hours long, so I figured I had to get this video out before I post that in probably about February. I hope to see you all there. Grazie e arrivederci.